Welcome to the Retrospect Podcast, a show where three people come together from different walks of life and discuss a topic from their generation's perspective. My name is Ian, and as always, I'm joined by Stoney. Hello. And we have our special reoccurring guest, Miranda. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How about, how about you? I'm good. Sort of. Sort of? Yeah. <laughs> so we have a little something to, to tell you that we have had a chance to, because this is all breaking news at this point. I guess you'd call it breaking news. I mean, you know. Better than breaking wind, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, what is all the details about? What's well? I don't want to. Uh, I don't know all the information, so I don't want to. I guess a little over two weeks ago, we went back for the post-stroke analysis of all the MRIs right. and things like that, and we knew that the stroke was actually kind of a godsend, um, because the way the stroke happened and the way it presented itself. They were looking in the right place, and they found a, a, a brain tumor. Mm. And that was in October of last year. Well, um, two weeks ago, we went for the follow-up, had all the MRIs done, and apparently there was a um, possibly um, uh, 10% growth in the tumor. Mm. And I guess there was a word you used. It could, Instead of growth, it could have been... Oh, positional. Positional. And he agreed with that. But there's, because it's sitting on an artery, mm. and it's one of the main arteries that feed my brain, that uh, we're going to have to get it in and take it out. Right. It went from being a little little sausage to a fat sausage. So, Yikes. So if it grows in the wrong direction, it pinches off the artery and just mm. I'll just go. <laughs> That's and, so scary, man. And so we're not going to let that happen. Um there, there's good news in it, and there's bad news in it. Um, the good news is that uh, it's a pretty good surgery. I mean, yeah, that is, you know, I guess the best news you can get. And I got God. That's something else. And I have a really good support group. Mm-hmm. Um, Miranda and the people around me are just amazing. They're not letting me kind of go to too many dark places with this thing. Yeah. Um, and then the, apparently the artery is the key to everything. Okay. So, depending on how the tumor is attached, first off, whether the tumor is cancer or not. Oh, yeah. Okay. And right, they'll know right. then. They'll, there'll be a pathologist right there. They'll take that sample. They'll run. Within an hour, they'll know. The surgeon has seen so many. He'll know right, right there. Right, right. You know, but they'll go through the motions. So, if there's no cancer, there's a sh- shot that I won't have to do radiation. Okay. And depending on if and how it's attached to the artery, you know, if they can just get it off right. and it's not actually grown into the artery, yeah, I might not have to do radiation. So there's some good news to this, and there's some other news to it. So, right. But uh, they uh, they um, gave me originally August the fifth, um, but they subsequently um, called us and let us know that now July the twenty seventh. Is the new date. Well. So they're going to do this nice little incision. Oh, <laughs> come around my head here and put some titanium plates in it. There you go. So you thought he was hard-headed before. Just yeah. wait. <laughs> and um, Miss Sandy at work, she she said, Stoney, yeah. you'll be upgraded. Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, ma'am, I will. And after the surgery, I'll identify as Stoney 2.0. There you so go. So I'll, I'll expect everybody to call me <laughs> Stoney 2.0 after that. I love and it. And I did ask if I could get Netflix. Yeah. While he's in there, if he's putting I all mean, this crap well. in my head, I should Just be able to get Netflix out of the deal, right? <laughs> Hardwired in there. Amazon Prime yeah. or something, <laughs> yeah. right? I what was that movie? Oh, I'm sorry. I know you don't get, know anything about movies. Do you? Depends. It's called Johnny Mnemonic, where yeah. um, Ken, I think it was Keanu Reeves, he had this thing that was installed in his head, really? and that was how they stored information to smuggle information around. Oh. Sounds, sounds wild. Oh, Lord. I have that movie. There you go. I'm going to find it for you because okay. you need to see that one. Yeah. Well, well, like you said before, you have people that are around you that are yes. keeping you positive about it. And I, I hope that I'm one of those, that I'm I'm here for you, that I, I've got your back. That, I know you do, yeah. and I appreciate that. And, um, yeah, because it, it definitely, <laughs> it sounds scary, but I know, mm-hmm. that, like you said, you got your good hands. So. Uh, I am. I, when you think about, I, I think of a whole process um, right. I, I didn't come into this relationship with Miranda to, to be a burden. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to do the little things to make sure that this doesn't 
hurt us. You mm-hmm. know, I've got somebody going to cut the grass. I've got people bringing food. I've, you right. know, I've contacted somebody about coming in to clean the house, you know, maybe once a week. You know, I'm still working right. on that one. But, you know, there's just little things that I'm trying to do to where it doesn't bother her. And she gets really put out because this time she's going to concentrate on me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> I'm getting the look. <laughs> Whenever you sleep. Yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but that's just it. I'm also, as big of the support group as I have, I'm trying to be still supportive for her. Of course. Um, because this is going to be a big deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and, and like with that as well, uh, I hope that everyone out there listening can also have, I guess, some some grace for us as well. Yes. During the next a few weeks or so, just while we kind of get, I, he's not going to go anywhere. Nope. I'm not getting rid of them. That's not if how we snake. remember when I had the stroke. <laughs> yes, I missed one episode. Right, right, and I was back. Exactly, blind as a bat. But right, bat. exactly, but back. So, and that was something we talked to the surgeon about. He, I said, how long am I going to be out? And he's like four weeks. And I said, I, I'll give you two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, No, wait, you don't understand. I'll be able to tickle your brain from where I'm looking. And he says, I'm, I'm gonna need four weeks. And I says, Well. You know, but he kind of remembered me from the stroke also and that I'm a beast. And so we kind of agreed to meet on kind of week three and reevaluate it. He said, you know, you got to understand, dude, I I really will be able to tickle your brain for where we're going to be. And so we have to have some time to make sure there's no brain bleeds, no infections, no seizure, no swelling. And he gives this list and I'm like, yes, you can have two weeks. (laughs) (laughs) But we kind of agreed on three that we would sit down. And go over it, and then he can get me back to work. Luckily, from my job, um, they're already talking about letting me do some from home. So after the first week, maybe, you know, I can do some, you know, work from home. Mm -hmm. That'll help. That'll help keep me occupied. Um, So it's when you talk about, you know, and that's one of our subjects we had on the whiteboard was support groups. Yeah. You know, what do you have around you in your life? Some people don't have that. I just... You know, that's one of the things I'm worried about for, for Miranda. You know, I, I hope I don't put her business out, but she's kind of an introvert. I'm an extrovert. Mm-hmm. So she doesn't really have the support group that I have. And I'm just trying to be that for her because mm-hmm. this, this is a hit. Oh, yeah, uh, we're, right. we're taking a hit. This is going to be tough. This is brain surgery. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, I would like to remind everybody that, you know, when we found this out, she, you know, looked at me and she saw me going into a dark place. And she said, you know, Stoney, the first condition of death is, you know, uh, immortality is death. And she said, the first condition that you have in a brain tumor is that we actually proved you have a brain. <laughs> so, you know, so she's trying to keep me out of that dark area, but I, I want to take care of her too. Of course. And, and that support group thing, I still want to be the support group, even though I know for a couple of weeks, she's going to have to look after me. Oh, right. Right. Well, and Ian uh, can come over to do your diapers. There you go. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> no. I'll cook you some food. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but as on top of all that, if that wasn't enough, this is also the 4th of July. Right. So this is this is, uh, this is a big time for us as well. I have a barbecue planned. I'm having some friends over and everything else like that, um, and I'm really excited about that. But I guess – like the bigger question on top of all that in support groups and all that kind of stuff is what is America to you? Like what, what does it look like to you? What, like how I have gotten the chance to see another country in some capacity, Mm -hmm. um, but maybe not quite on the other side of the pond. And even just seeing that little bit that I did see it makes me appreciate where I am and where I come from mm-hmm. and not taking for granted the, the freedoms and the things that I do have. And what does that look like to you in some way? I think we're on the verge of losing them. And it's because of people in here in America. First, and this is another conversation I hope we have it. First off, America is not a democracy. America is a constitutional republic. And our people in politics are not our leaders. They're our servants. Mm -hmm. They work for us, and they they forget that. 
Okay? Yeah. They're, they're not our leaders. They've never been established to lead us. America and the Constitution was founded not to control the citizens, but to control the government. Mm-hmm. This is a loosely grouped affiliation of states that may not always agree on the same thing. And that's why, like Roe versus Wade, they took it out of the federal government and gave it back to the states. They didn't destroy Roe versus Wade. They said this does not belong in the federal government's hands. This belongs in the state's hands. And I see people like, you know, Nazi Pelosi pushing a little girl the other day. Mm. Uh, She couldn't have been 11 years old because this was a Republican woman that won a seat in a um, in Texas that had been held by a Democrat for over 150 years, and the little girl is standing by what should be an awesome thing to stand by the Speaker of the House or the minority right. leader or whoever these people are, and you can just watch her push her away. Mm. That's a leader, right? We're losing it because we are we are not upholding our workers and the people that represent us to a higher standard. Mm. And I believe America, I don't think it's going to crumble, but I think we're going to take a hit. And I see things turning in the other. Remember we talked about the pendulum a while back? Oh, yeah. How things swing back and forth? Right, right. Well, it's been in the liberals' direction for a while now, and it's starting to swing back into the curve, you know, the the conservative arena, because they're losing now. Right. One thing I, I has made me think recently about all this like you had mentioned, like giving the states back the power to like to make decisions on mm-hmm. things, it made me just really consider what like a few years down the line of that, of like the federal government giving power back to the states and the, and the people in the states to then uh, make the vote for certain things. Like <laughs> you're gonna have it. Just feels like like we're already divided on certain mm-hmm. things. But like if we have certain states that are like very staunchly against certain things or for certain things, it just feels like it's going to further divide us in a way. But, but that's uh, the but point. I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it's bad by any means. Um I mean obviously like vote for mm-hmm. what you believe in what you want and to make change happen. Um but it just feels like you're going to have like these like it definitely feels like we're really splitting off into these little um but it's okay for of, that. It, it's right, it's okay. Right. If California wants to pass a law and 75% of the citizens of California vote mm-hmm. to ban all weapons, all of them, right. handguns, yeah. rifles, shotguns, everything, let them do it. Right. Let them do it. And I agree with that. If that's what their citizens want, not the politicians. Right. If the citizens come together and vote to ban all weapons, do it Mm -hmm. because after the third criminal gets shot in Florida, (laughs) Texas, Louisiana, or somewhere here, guess where all the criminals are going to go. They're going to go to California Mm -hmm. where it's safe. Right. Okay. So here's my point. Once you pass that law then, and that's what your citizens (laughs) want, you can't ask the federal government for help. You pass the law, you deal with it now. Right. So, that's just, that was just what I had thought about. Like it's just there, especially, there are more conservative states that agree yeah. with abortion. I mean, that don't agree with abortion, and there are more liberal states that do. Right, great. Go be a citizen there. Right. My mother, love her to death. She said, "I wish I have enough money to go live in California for six months." Hmm. Do you know why? Why is that? Because you have to live there for six months to participate in the right to die law that's there that you can commit suicide legally. Hmm. That's hard. Okay. So other States, I think they should be able to do what they want. All right. I just don't think every state should have to follow suit just because one state says they want that. Right. That's not what, that's not what this was founded on. So Miranda, how long have you been in the States? Since 1997. Okay, so you've been here for a, mm-hmm. for a minute. Then you got yep. to see some. What year were you born? Ninety four. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, right, right. You were three. Yeah. Um, oh, Lord, and right. I've known you that long too. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's the crazy part. Um, 
So I guess. I'm, Holy crap. That's a realization I, yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Wow. Um, I guess the question is like, what, what are your feelings on? Cause I mean, you've obviously been here long enough to see the. You uh, wanted to come uh, here. I didn't did. You? I'm American you, by choice. <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a socialist, socialist light kind of country. Right. And I have seen both sides of the coin, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you cannot convince me that socialized medicine, like as you see in Canada, right. is worth the paper that it's written on. Um, <laughs> you cannot convince me that the American system is also superior. I think we need to find, you know, something in the middle. Right. Um, I don't think that, I think that healthcare here has gotten completely out of hand as far as cost is concerned and that you've got um, people in little, little, you know, cubicle offices dictating whether somebody gets treatment or not to save their life or how much things are going to get paid or, you know, a drug is, you know, $10,000 a, a, a shot. Meanwhile, up in Canada, it's 400. You have to ask why. Yeah. Um, so neither, neither system um, is perfect by any means, but I see every single week in my group online and with, you know, people that I still know in Canada, the healthcare falls flat. So like I said, I don't, I don't think that socialism is the way to go. My mother's up there right now. Um, gas, it's like $180 to fill your tank. Mm. So all the normal running around in places that she liked to go and, you know, the little fruit markets and things that right. she would normally see, Have she's like, eh, do I really want to go? She right. went to get some dog food. Here, you know, we go to Tractor Supply. Uh, a little bag of dog food's $26. That same bag of dog food up there is $99. Stop it. That's for a five. That's that crazy. <laughs> yes. That's insane. <laughs> for a five pound bag of kibble. Um, no, I'm sorry. The The five pound bag of kibble was $37 and the 15 pound bag of kibble was 99 That is crazy. So I'm just like thinking, okay, this, this socialism isn't working out too well for people. <laughs> and I don't think a lot of Americans that are voting for all of these very liberal policies realize what's coming down the pipeline. You know, right. I, I've been in both countries, and I've been in both countries as an adult, so I see the writing on the wall. Um, well, the difference in that is is that the people that aren't complaining get their shit for free anyway. The people that are out there working their ass off and now are spending on average 450 to $490 more a month than they did mm. two years ago are the ones who are having a rough time. The people that get all this shit for free, they're not complaining. It doesn't affect them at all. And and that's tough because, you know, it's like when I when I grew up, you learn about the United States. You learn about manifest destiny. You learn yeah. about if you want to work hard, you can get ahead. You know, the United States is the place of milk and honey. It is the place where uh, if you have a dream, you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, meanwhile... I grew up in Canada. My, my parents were self-employed. Um, they were entrepreneurs. My grandparents were entrepreneurs. So, you know, I'm third generation entrepreneur. And I saw my parents in an almost 60% ta- income tax bracket. Mm. And, you know, they were one of the biggest employers in our area for some time. And yet we couldn't get ahead. <laughs> you know, when you uh, think, yeah. of, you think uh, yeah. about that. Um, I know people with multiple university degrees, and they were working minimum wage jobs. Right. You know, it was really, really hard to get ahead. Um, I just, I don't, I don't get it. So it's like when I was in university, I always planned on coming to the United States because that's where you could get ahead. That's where you could build your dream. That's where, you know, all the cool stuff you saw on TV was in the United States. Yeah. So I've got a different view on things, and I see... I see a lot of things getting screwed up right now that make me really wary about where our future's going. All right. That's, I agree. It makes me nervous about like where, uh, it's, it's like in my, my late teens and early twenties, I, I really had the mindset of like, I just don't really care what, what goes on. Um, and like, I just, I was young and I was dumb and I was like, Oh, it's just going to work itself out or, you know, or whatever. And I would vote on things here and there, but no, nothing really crazy. But now as I've gotten older, I've like really been proactive about like looking into stuff that I believe in and stuff that I like really am like on the side for and was like, 
you can say all you want to say about like about your vote or your decision like making a difference or 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 it doesn't or whatever you want to believe but like i still feel like by me being younger and not voting how do you word this correctly hmm. i feel like if i voted on things or if i if i put in my effort to like make a difference in my community or in my local area i then technically i had the right to talk about it i had the right to like get frustrated about it or i could or i could vent about certain well, things can, can i interject but, there yeah because i had a conversation with a politician here recently mm-hmm. And I said, this is where you people, and you're nailing it. Mm-hmm. And you're nailing it. I mean, this is a conversation I had here recently. I said, you people. <laughs> and I pointed to you people. <laughs> right. You're only fighting for the people that vote for you. Right. But that's not who you work for. You vote for the people that work for you. You vote. You work for the people that voted against you. Right. And believe this or not, you work for the people who have chosen not to vote because they've given up. Yeah. And they don't see any reason, any, what's the point? Right. It's right. not going to change anything. You work for those people too. Yeah. And, and they looked at me with this ghastly look like, <laughs> how dare you tell me who I work for? And I says, if yeah. you, if you don't get it, you don't belong in that position you have. Right. I mean, think about what, just exactly what you just said. Yeah. You're making a conscious choice not to vote mm-hmm. because well, and but and that was what like on the adverse of that, like I was mm-hmm. saying, for me, as I grew up and I had friends and I had other people that abstained from voting because of decisions they made in their life. That's fine. I'm not gonna tell you what you can and can't do, but would then get upset and frustrated with me whenever things didn't go their way. And I was like, then I would get frustrated because I was like, I was in the same mindset, uh, like you were saying, of like. I know you may have a belief or may have a feeling that like your vote doesn't matter or doesn't change anything or doesn't or whatever. But especially now that we're with this bigger picture of things mm-hmm. moving back to like the state's decision for things, if the federal government is now giving states the choice and then we as the citizens of those states now can make like votes for things now more than ever, you it, it you are responsible right. as a citizen. You're of that really state becoming of responsible like, yeah, now. And, and now again, depending on, like you said, if you believe if your votes, you know, whatever, I, I don't want to get into all that, but if you don't, then not making a decision, isn't making a decision. What if there was a vote and, for this party or a vote <laughs> for this party and a no confidence vote? There you go. <laughs> Think about that. Right. What if the no confidence vote won? Right. Oh, yeah. And Would people get out and vote more? Maybe. Isn't that kind of what third party tickets are, oh, though? Right. Uh, no, third kind party of. tickets generally only pull off of one party. And it really askews because only a small group are going to vote for that. But if you have a no confidence vote, then both parties can say, oh, shit, <laughs> I'm clicking that one, I'm clicking right. that one. But generally, if you have a libertarian party or another party, you're going to pull so many votes off of the, the conservative party that the, the liberals are going to win. So you have to be very, very careful in that, how you have that third party come in. Right. The, to end out what I was saying mm-hmm. about, about the discussion, uh, I was basically saying, if you're going to sit here and get upset and, and, and get frustrated or whine or cry or get angry at things not going your way. I don't feel like now again, as a U.S. citizen, you still have the right of free speech to say whatever you want to, but I feel like you don't have the right to then complain about it because you forfeit your opportunity to make a difference is what it felt like. Mm -hmm. And so now that like with everything else going on in the world and things happening, I am with things coming up in the next few months or years, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be very educated about certain things and decisions that I make because I know that it can really make a difference, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, well, it can make a difference in my local area. Maybe yeah, not in the bigger say, picture, but... <laughs> after <laughs> 81 million <laughs> votes came in for Biden after the polls closed, I'm not so sure on the federal level how much our votes count, but they do count on a state level. Right, and that's the thing, and that's that's all I was trying to get 
mm-hmm. get across was. Um, and that's one of the benefits right. of them putting more into the state's power. We have more control of what we're going to do. We have more right. access to politicians. Right. There are things that are also being passed as far as like contracep- contraceptives, contraception. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what it's considered. You got it. You got it. Um, again, in, in our local area, we live in the Louisiana area. That the Bible Belt. Right. Oh, and that, and then also very heavily Catholic. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, just intrinsically. Um, and they're against that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm, I may not... People may feel one way about abortion and then another way about contraception, or receptives, I don't know what the correct term is. Um, uh, and I'm curious as to see how some of that stuff works as well. Like, Well, and IVF falls under the same umbrella as well. And, and so that's, that's my thing now is, you know, where does this all, how does this all play together as far as like, are, are we going to have the vote for that kind of stuff? Will I have the well, me, and then more importantly, well, Mallory, as a citizen, as a female citizen of this state, have the choice to say, like, you know, yes or no to something like that. Mm-hmm. That's that's where I, I want to know if this is going to, you know, be beneficial in that regard. But I, I'm, I'm scared because, like you said, it feels like there are certain things that are freedoms and things that are intrinsically I've always had and have taken for granted – um, and I am nervous that you're going to be taken away. Mm-hmm. Well, let me let me take it one step further and ask you this. When you're looking at the states and the states' rights and how the states all came together in the first place, the mm-hmm. states have the right to break apart. And we've always heard the little rumblings that Texas wants to become its own republic right, and things. Right. So at what point, what do you think is going to have to happen for before – Texas and Florida and maybe some of these other states. Maybe right, California right. breaks away because they're, you know, they're we just doing hope. their own thing. Hope. But what what do you think is going to happen? Like, is it going to be over gun rights? Is it going to be over Roe versus Wade? Is it what what is going to have to happen it, for a state to it, say enough is enough? We're backing out. This is not our not our circus, not our monkeys kind right. of thing. Well, I can tell you when it when the rumblings really first started happening, kind of on a wide scale, was when Obama. <laughs> tried to sign a small arms agreement with the world and was going to have NATO come in and take the guns from the American citizens. And that's when Texas, a little bit of Louisiana, Florida, a couple of the others says, no, we're done. We're out of here. And they started actually looking at what it would take to succeed from the union. And I think we're only, I don't think it'll be Roe versus Wade, but I do think it'll be something like, the second amendment or this oil bullshit, Mm. you know, because right now we're sitting here at, you know, what is it? um, $5 a gallon, almost on a nationwide average, almost $6 a a gallon. And when Ronald Reagan took office, he basically called the governors of Louisiana, Texas, and Oklahoma. And it's funny that some of the politicians use those same three States. And he, they, he said, just pump the oil. Mm. Pump as much as you want, flood the market with oil and drive the price down. But that was also a conservative leader. And now you have the liberals and all. they, 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 Joe Biden gets on TV the other day and says, Oh, y'all just need to charge less. That's not going to help. Mm-mm. That's not going to charge less flood the market. You're still going to make your money. Oh, he wants to rescind the gas tax, which is what eight whole cents on yes. a gallon. <laughs> right. Oh wow. <laughs> it said over the whole summer it would save people about thirty dollars. Well, the thing about it is, is you know that thirty cents compared to the four dollars more a gallon it was two years ago. Right. Thirty cents doesn't help anything. No. I remember a handful of years ago when I was first starting to drive, that gas was like tiptoeing, like past three and four dollars back in. Oh eight, oh nine, mm-hmm. or, or closer to two thousand. I can remember fifty five cents a gallon. I remember, I remember the big deal <laughs> when the boards went over a dollar because the boards could only handle ninety nine cents. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when it went over, mm-hmm. people lost their minds. Of course, lost their freaking minds. That was around the same time that I was born, I think, because my mom had told me that my my grandma was like, if if gas ever goes to a dollar, I'm I ain't driving anymore or something mm-hmm. like that. When I moved to this country, 
it cost me $12 to fill up my gas tank. <laughs> so now you know I never get, get too low. Oh, but man. still, I remember I remember having to budget $12 a week for my gas. Wow. And, you know, now, <laughs> what is it, 80, 90 bucks? <laughs> oh, yeah, easy. It's insane. It, it's I, yeah, I, and I, I don't let my tank go below half. I, I believe I put, no. I believe I put, eighty bucks in my truck, and uh, I wasn't, I wasn't quite at a full tank, and I got real sad that for a second because I was like, okay, oh, think, man. Of, think about this for a minute. Cutting grass. Okay, I have an X Mark laser X mower. Right, love it. Crazy, it's brilliant mower. It's insane. Love it. It's a little older model. Holds ten gallons. Mm-hmm. $50 to fill up yeah, my lawnmower. Yeah, yeah, lawnmower. My freaking lawnmower takes $50 to fill it up. That's nuts. Come on, people. Yeah. Really? It's, it's cutting al- grass. It's, it's almost like you have to charge more. Like anyone who has, anyone who's in lawn care, I wouldn't be surprised if their gas prices were, I mean, if their prices overall go up because Well, of everything gas. has gone up except our paychecks. Right. Oh. Everything has gone up. You yeah. know, I looked at you know the price of eggs and you know they've gone from a dollar 99 um you know i think at, at uh sam's club i used to pay about 3.99 for the, the large pack of eggs right. it's 10.99 now really 10.99 for a pack of eggs well, that was no joke when i stated earlier that the average american is paying between 450 and 490 mm-hmm. four hundred and ninety dollars more a month than they were two years ago All right that's a lot of money mm-hmm I don't doubt it. It's an extra car payment or more. Yeah, for right. For yeah. most people, mm-hmm. or uh, or more money on a house note. If you and, and I've one. said this on this podcast before. Most, I think, it's seventy five percent of Americans are one major auto repair away from bankruptcy. Yeah, you have said that. I'm. We're there. Yeah. Right now, we're there, and I think that is going to be the, these type of things is going to be when states start saying, you know what, maybe we don't need to be part of this. Uh, yeah, and I think that. To go like to circle back around to what you were saying, like what is that one thing? What is that one straw that breaks the camel's back? Is I I really do feel like it's like a, a it's like a domino effect of things. It's not. I mean, it may be one thing that really feels like it's the one to really bust the balloon, but it it um it it feels like things like this, like Roe versus another Wade, eighty million like, people voting for Biden after the um. Right. The polls close one more time. I think that would do it. Oh, yeah. I think enough people are going to say, okay, we're done. We can't trust you. We're done. We're right. going to do our own thing over here. Yeah. And you'll just deal with this on a different level than we are now because we can't, you can't trust them. Mm. I mean, it's you can't trust stuff. the federal government. It's scary stuff. It's scary to, to hear you, like to hear you say something like that because I know I, I almost agree with you on certain things, but like, I know like a handful of years ago, stuff like that would almost sound like conspiracy theory stuff. And now we're living in this world where it's like, yeah, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. And you're like, man, this is not, what is, what is going well, we've on got here? Midterms coming up. Yeah. In November, October, November. And then after that, depending on the way that the pendulum swings during mm-hmm. those midterms, that's going to put the writing on the wall. And right, then, right. you know, the, the current people in power will have a absolute free for all for two years, trying to push through as many things as that they mm-hmm. possibly can, because unless they plan on cheating again, they know that people are not going to vote for them again. I, I have liberal friends mm-hmm. oh, same. that are admitting they might have made a mistake. They don't right. really want to admit it, but they're like, you know, we were made promises that aren't coming to right, fruition. Yeah. And they're going, I would be hard. I don't want to vote for, I'm not, not me. I'm Mm -hmm. just my liberal. Speaking on that. They're speaking on what they've said. I don't want to vote for Donald Trump, Mm -hmm. but I'm going to have a hard time voting for this administration again. Yeah. It definitely has felt like the past few elections from what I've seen has been that feeling in a nutshell of, it just really does feel like the lesser of two evils. And I'm not super happy with, We've got 360 odd million people in this country. Yes. Is this the best we have to offer? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're seriously, right. like, you're right. can, it's I will I will personally because the first time I ever voted was for Donald Trump. 
you know, I, I made a point of voting, you know, because I had never voted right. before. I had always avoided it. I did not want to get on different rosters or anything else. I just avoided it. I stayed neutral. I did my own thing. But I, I got out and I voted that time. And I'm sitting back and I'm thinking right now, you know, I know people that voted for Biden because he mm-hmm. wasn't Trump. And they hey, just they yes. just had such a hate on for Trump. And I'm thinking, if we let Trump vote or run again, we're going to have people that are going to vote just for anybody that isn't him. I, yes, and that's what I was saying. Like I, I just want something. I want something fresh. I want a new perspective. I want somebody new. I want. I want to. I want to clean. I want to what's, what's, run. The, what's the difference between <laughs> animals and humans? Um, there's a, a number of things. All right, but, I'm gonna tell you mine. Okay, yeah. Okay. What's that? Animals won't let the dumbest of them be their leader. <laughs> there you go. They're gonna pick the strongest and the badasses, and they're gonna say, yeah, "You yeah. be our leader." Right. I just you want know, humans will just we will you know allow the dumbest people that we can get mm. to lead us because they make us these fake ass promises and then don't back them up. Yeah. If we implemented one thing across the board, and that was no more career politicians, yes. you could have two terms, and that's it. Mm. Period. End of. St- you know, you can't jump from position to position to position. Their whole idea is that you know when you and you look at like when Abraham Lincoln and all these people that helped build the foundation of our country right they were all lawyers and farmers and this and that and they came to washington to do what they needed to do and they went home we need people that come to washington and go home and still have their jobs we don't need people like nancy pelosi that's never held an honest day of work in her life and never held a real job we don't need them dictating what we're all doing and holding that position for what is it 800 years Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> she's like well. the crypt keeper up there with her little <laughs> bottle of whiskey. Um, you know, we, we have to stop the career politicians I agree because with they're, not, they're not do. doing anything good for anybody. And they're coming in like that AOC chick who's complaining that she can't have a family on her $176,000 salary. Well, I'm sorry. How many Americans have $176,000 salary and are whining about it? You know, it's like she was a bartender before she got in. She needs to go back to being a bartender and see how real people will live because oh, yeah. it's not representative. And it's these people that are in Washington that are supposed to be representing us, they're not. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to fix. Right. And I agree with term limits. I don't agree that they can't jump from job to job. Um, I think if you become a governor, you should be able to go into the Senate, mm-hmm. a higher position. Right. And but then you max out. If you can't become president, hey, carry your ass to the house and do something else. You're going to start off small in councils. Right. You know, city council this, city council that. Maybe move up to mayor. Maybe move up to a state house or senate. Then maybe try for the governor. And then once you become, you know, you're learning some things. And then maybe try for a federal position. But these people that just tack on 20, 30 years in office, I think you're done. Two terms, you're out. Move somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Do something else. There also should be no more pensions for them. These yes, lifelong no. pensions. Let's well, get yeah. rid of it because none them, of us can have a job for eight years and have a lifelong. Put the same health care benefits. They need to have as VA. Common America. No, they yes. need to have the VA I benefits. Agree. I agree. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. you know what, the, our veterans and how they get treated would completely change yes. if our politicians had VA Absolutely. benefits. Right now, I think when if you become president, because your life is never going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. If Nancy Pelosi left and she went and did something, she doesn't need security Mm because nobody's going to care about her. And, but if you become president, you're actually considered a statesman for the rest of your life. Right. There are things expected of you, um, formals, um, you know, heads of, you have to meet with heads of state. So I think you should have a pension because you're going to be flying. You're going to be doing stuff for America. You see that with all of our old presidents. Um, I don't, I don't mind them having a pension because they're going, they're still going to earn it. Right. But all of these other people, you're done. Yeah. You're done. You should, it's against the constitution for you to pass a law that makes you different than the American citizen. Mm-hmm. I got hit a couple years ago. I got hit by a, Lu- a Louisiana representative and they had passed a law two years before that says you can't write them a ticket while session is in session. So she hit me, distracted driver. Her attorney is in the vehicle. Oh my and gosh. she hit me on purpose. And I have seven witnesses. 
and I get five points because she gets out her car screaming and hollering, do you know who I am? And the little city cop there backed down and couldn't even write her a ticket, even though all of my witnesses are saying we saw her, both her and that person in the car. She was late for session. She was from North Louisiana, late for session, not paying attention. Both of them were looking at the map, trying to figure they weren't even close to where they needed to be. Right. Hit me, and they can't do anything to her. That's messed up. And you've had higher health, higher auto insurance it's ever since. Just dropping off now. Really? I think we yes. should call her out. <laughs> you know what's what's really funny because of that attitude, she got voted out the there very next go. time. She 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 didn't survive. Um, if you want to drop names, be, feel free. I mean, <laughs> it's uh, uh, yeah. It, it's crazy to think that there's this whole system of people that benefit. It. Uh, what happened to Nancy Pelosi's husband? DWI accident. Not his first one. Not his first one. I'm just talking about the fact that, like, it feels like there is this secret royalty aspect to it. Like, it just feels like we've come full circle again, and you have these kings and queens and these people of court that have this, like, certain level of, like, clout. In one fashion, it used to be like that. JFK and Jackie O, they were, you know, American American royalty. royalty. Right, right. But they were honorable. Right, right. They looked good. They, They did things a certain way. He, yeah, he... But this isn't right. No, this isn't. Yeah, right. it, this it is just is. passing laws to make us better than you, and you're going to serve us. And no, I ain't doing it. All the compassion. Is there anything is gone. good we like about America? Yeah. yeah, I think there is, and I think it is. It Spray is spray the, cheese. There you go. Okay, that's not necessarily American. I mean, What's it American? is. It's, it's yeah, nowhere brother. else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my freedoms as right, of right, today. Right. Yeah, it's still the best thing going. If and. For me, I like the fact that there is this pendulum that swings, even though so mm-hmm. far right now it is scary because it feels like it has swung far, far in one direction. Like I said, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but like the the potential that all of us could come together as citizens mm-hmm. and say, we want to just put the last eight years behind us. Let's just not forget about it, but let's push it aside and let's figure out what is going to be the thing that we need to do the most, like the best together and, and then vote hopefully honorably like someone in power that can do that. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant by like having a fresh perspective. I would love to have somebody in there that just has uh, a new mindset about stuff and is willing to just hit the ground running and make some change happen. Don't don't we have a hashtag Stony for president? Stony for president. (laughs) Yeah. I forgot about that. I I want to throw something your way from both of y'all. Um, and there's a point to it. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take us on a little journey here. Okay. Got if, it. if, if you're a, in the military in America okay, and you join the air force, what are you called? Mm-hmm. An airman. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're right. asking the wrong person. Well, so. no, no. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. If you go in the army, what are you called? A soldier. Soldier. Okay. Okay. If you go in the Navy, what are you called? A cool. sailor. Okay. If you go into the Marines, what are you called? A Marine. Mm -hmm. That's the only group like that. So I say that, and I'm going to say this to you. We've been talking about immigration. America is the only country, and I'm going to stop, and I'm going to say, if you immigrate to Germany, what are you called? An immigrant. Mm -hmm. You will never be a German. Okay. If you go to Russia, what are you going to be called? An immigrant. You will never be Russian. Mm -hmm. If you go to China, you will never be Chinese. Mm Mm-hmm. America is the only place that you can migrate to go to America, do the right thing. Like my wife here. Mm -hmm. And she's an American now, right? America is the only country in the world that you can do your due diligence and become an American. Right. Only country. Mm -hmm. Well, I was telling, that's what's great about America. Right. You know, one of the, one of the things that always makes me smile is that me, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, one of it, the other things. One of the other things okay. that right, makes me right. smile is that for almost 30 years, um, I was not an American. Yeah. And so whenever I would cross the border, you would have border patrol on both both sides of the border 
rip apart your car, rip apart what you order, ask, you know, ask you for all the receipts, ask you where you've been, what you spent money on. Like you got the, you got grilled to the ninth degree. Once I became a citizen, I would, you know, I would get asked on the Canadian side, you know, where are you going to visit my mom? Why are you living in the state? Like, you know, it would get this instant yeah. attitude because now I'm on an American passport. I would come back in the United States and I wasn't asked for receipts. I wasn't asked for <laughs> where I've been or right. what I've done or anything else. They're like, welcome home. Yeah. That's what's great about America. That's, crazy. that's, that's it. You know, this was and still is. I think we have some hiccups. But this is still the greatest thing going. We have freedoms other people don't have. Right. And you can still come here and be successful. Yeah. And you know those Border Patrol agents have a hell of a job right now because oh, yeah. they really, you you have to give them some, some kudos and some props because they've got an administration that is not supporting them. They're, yep. they're doing a job. Um, a th- they're doing an absolutely thankless job. And then they're getting in trouble for doing their job. Yeah. Or they're being told not to do their job, and then they're getting in trouble, getting lambasted for not doing their job. So they're they're in a really tough position. So when knowing that, and you come across the border, and they're just welcome home, you're just like, you know what? There are so, still some good people in the world. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I've only ever had to deal with border c- patrol, like myself personally, twice going there and then coming back and i can i can agree with that in in the opposite way of like i was very harsh going to canada you know getting grilled about everything but then coming back home the guy who was at the at the gate who was like checking all my stuff and was like gave him the whole spiel about how i'm moving back all that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> he, think, think he about what said, you're saying and this was the country that took all the draft dodgers yeah they were willing hey come on we'll take right, you right, come right. on Wait, he, uh, why didn't they get any grief? Yeah. He uh I was talking with him for a while and uh he uh he was like, Oh, where are you going? And I was like, Head back home. He's like, Where's home for you? And I was like, Louisiana. And he's like, No way, I'm from there. <laughs> and I was like, What are you doing way up here? He's like It's too hot. He's like the, he's like the job. The job is what brought me mm-hmm. here. So I was like, That's, that's well crazy. my my stepdad uh, is a British citizen. Okay and as you sometimes see with British folks, they can have a little bit of an attitude. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever we crossed the border, we always had our seats unzipped and taken apart because he would really? he would do everything wrong. So he would refuse to take off his sunglasses, and then he would back talk the border patrol people. Mm. And so he was just purposefully being an ass because he enjoyed winding people up. And so every time we crossed the border, it was a four or five or six hour adventure. Yikes. And then we wonder, you know, we wondered if we were going to be sitting in front of a judge or if we got to go home that day. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's fun in trying to be an ass. I'm practicing right now for when I wake up from the surgery. I'm going to cross my eyes and go, I know Kung Fu. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you do that, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> there you go. It's, it, you have to practice at it. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, right. There, right. there are that's the, funny mm-hmm. there are numerous Come on, look at the surgeon's face i'm gonna get face. you some birkenstocks oh my god no. oh gosh you wake up with birkenstocks no. on your feet Hell <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she threatened to bury me in birkenstocks oh. and, and a man shorts ki- and a man and shorts kini. yes and i'm like i will haunt you for yeah. the rest of your life i wouldn't be surprised if he he just he sits straight up from his casket like, get this off me <laughs> but yeah I, like i said there are numerous other things that this country the, like one thing that I talked about was there are freedoms that I have that I haven't had a chance to really um, uh, participate in. Like you gonna try the Second Amendment? I don't own a firearm, and I would well, love. We need to change And that. I would love to own a firearm. You need would, to not wait too long. The way things I, are going, and that's, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is that is that whenever I was younger, I was I just was like, oh, it's just freedoms that I have. That's I mean that's that's awesome. They're always going to be there. They're always going to be there. Nope. And now I feel like we're tiptoeing into this place of. You know, I, I, I'm not planning on doing anything. I'm not planning on doing anything wrong with the firearm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do anything, but it's just the fact that I do live in a place where like, excuse me, being able to protect myself would be, um, very important. And also the fact that I feel like we are getting to a place where there was an active shooting just down the street that we all live off of two days ago. Right. We need to take you over to Jim's and get you hooked up. 
either like an MP shield or a little yes. Glock There's 43 two things or you something. Need. Yeah. You need an ice pistol mm-hmm. and an AR. There you go. That's what you need. And then okay, so learn how to use them. Yes. I would, and that's the thing is that I'm willing to. I want to learn. I want to be. I have never um, been careless with firearms. Mm-hmm. I have nothing but respect for them because I know what they are and I want to treat them as such. Um, but like I said, I've always had like a. It's always just been like it is that that right as an American citizen that I have that I will hopefully never really need to use. And now it's getting to the point now where it's like, even it's, if I don't use it, I think it is still responsible for me to have it. Sure. It's an insurance and policy. Exactly. Well, <laughs> right, but, right. You know, you have a lovely girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hopefully one day soon you'll upgrade that status. Yes. And things change when you have a family. Of course. You go from having fun and fart knocking around. Right. To where this is now my responsibility. We think about a better vehicle. Mm-hmm. We think about, you know, what's, you know, cost efficient, you know, protect my family. Now I right. got to protect them. What am I going to do? It's mm-hmm. not just about the car and the house. Now it's what do I need to do to, to take care of this that's been entrusted to me? Right. Exactly. And and that's the thing is as I, I'm not 30 yet, but as I'm, you know. Ooh, damn, the, you close I'm, though. I, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm knocking on the door of 30. It's just that it's things like that in life. I'm getting to that point in life where I'm, you know, starting to think about a family. I'm starting to think about settling down. I'm thinking about those responsibilities. And again, you know, just I am, I, I am becoming pretty confident in feeling who I am and who mm-hmm. I know that I am. Um, and now it's kind of looking outwardly a little bit about the things around me. As I well. don't agree with everything that Donald Trump did or any, you know, a uh, lot of what yeah. he said. Right. But there was one comment that I did agree with. And he said, the liberals don't want me. They mm-hmm. want you. And I'm the only thing standing in their way. Yeah. They want your guns. They right. want your freedoms. They want those things. And, and, and he arrogantly knew he, he was the stop gap at that point to kind of stop that. Right. And then now that he's gone, they're going for the guns. They're going for your freedoms. They're, they're going, going for ammunition. They're going for ammunition. Yeah. That's the next one. Yeah. Yikes. There was a point in time years and years ago when the, the, the libtard said, you can keep your guns. But what we're going to do now is we're going to require all ammunition manufacturers to, to um, etch a serial number on each bullet and each shell casing. And it was going to make bullets like 6 to $10 a piece. I believe it. So they're being very specific that you can have your guns, but we're going to get your ammo. Mm. And when that measure failed, that's when the federal government started allowing health and hospitals to buy 500 million rounds of ammunition. What does health and hospitals doesn't even have guns, but they were buying ammo to create this shortage that we're in now. Really? Yes. Wow. So they were buying hundreds of millions of rounds at a time. And that's not just, that's just them. Well, All then, federal agencies. Look at what's happened in Canada with Trudeau banning oh, handguns. Jesus. And he's telling Canadians, you know, cause he went full, full on all gun ban. And then he, he, had a big backlash and he had to backtrack a little bit and he was just like, all right, well, you can have a gun to hunt. You can have a gun, you know, for the sport know, shoot, to sport shoot, yes. but you don't have the right to defend yourself. I'm like, hello, <laughs> isn't that a <laughs> fundamental right to save your life, yeah, save right. the life of your family? Well, up until America, until maybe the forties, if you mm-hmm. owned a home, you were required to care to have a gun. Right. Because through the pioneer times and other times, that's how you hunted. You protected your family. You, you did a whole lot. You were required to have a gun. Right. All of these politicians that are voting um, against gun ownership and against the Second Amendment should be forced to give up their armed protection. Yes. There I you agree. go. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. It's Nobody like if, if you believe that, it should, it should just be, it should be universal. Right. Because I, what the Constitution allows for, and again, I'm an orig- ori- originalist constitutional. The Constitution does not give you the right to bear arms. Did -hmm. you know that? No. What it says is, your right shall not be infringed. Mm. So again, it's not about controlling me. It's about controlling my government. Mm -hmm. That's what the Constitution's for. It's not there to tell me what to do. I know what to do. It's about telling the government what it can and can't do. 
There you go. And then I heard recently that Trudeau is allowing allowing people to cross the border over into Canada to have abortions, apparently. It's something he was also, like, numerous things that were, it's also happening that I'm just confused by. It's like, I don't understand where your stance is on certain things. Like, you can... Okay, if you can't make a good decision to to or to not have sex, what makes you think you have a good right to choose another human life? Yeah. I have a That's, problem with that. It gets it gets into some really sticky situations with a lot of that stuff. There's I think there's a lot of, there's a, without getting into the whole Roe versus Wade debate and everything else that's going on with it, I just feel like there are Everyone, there needs to be provisions. Everyone, and I'll leave it at that. There needs well, the, to be provisions. The, right. the hypocrisy is just way too far. It's my body. Okay, let's talk about vaccines then. It's my body. Uh, my my thing is like it's just it, everyone keeps saying that this is like a deeply personal choice for this person, but no one's talking about the, the choices that they're making up until that point. I just did. I was, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like just it just did. doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. I'm not like I said. I don't want to step on any toes i'm not going to say anything but it nope. just is that's that's that kind of stuff that i'm talking about where i don't know <laughs> you, you there, well you can't say that it's only applicable to people that have a uterus all right because you know birth control in whatever capacity it is has to be something that comes from both parties right um but if if you want to make it unilateral and say that women can't have the rights to do different things, then are they going to start saying that men need to be paying child support right from the moment of conception, or that you know it's there? There's there's a lot that goes into it, and like I said, IVF and birth control. There's a bunch of things that come into play. The morning after pill is that going to be yeah. legal for people? Um, so it's it's a very complicated issue, and I think that. Some of the liberals are purposely making it so scary and, and trying to be fundamentalist about it that are turning off people that would normally say, you know what, let's find a happy medium. Yeah. So um, it's there. there is no easy answer for that one, unfortunately. Right. But it doesn't belong in the federal government. It belongs closer to a state's level where the politicians are closer to their constituents and understand what each state group of people want to allow or not allow. But I think that it does fall under federal personally. Ooh. Okay. Well, you I can. do. I you do can. because you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a women's right. It's a, a man can go and they can, you know, a man can walk into any doctor and say, I want a vasectomy and they will give it to them that day. If you're a woman and you walk into your OB and you say, you know what? I want my tubes tied. they are like, have you asked your husband yet? Have you had kids yet? And you get you get grilled, and they'll often refuse to do the procedure if you're under a certain age or if you haven't had a certain number of kids, and okay, that's, that's not right. Two totally no, different it, conversations because it, I agree with you on that. Okay, it all I agree falls under the same umbrella. Yeah. No, I don't think it does. Yeah, because abortion is taking another life. That's and, not the same thing. But what they're doing is it's. It's just the first step in, okay, no morning after pill. Now, in the states that have already rescinded, you know, having abortion, um, all the embryos that people have had that are doing IVF and stuff, they're in limbo, you know. Or if, if you have, um, you've had a pregnancy where you've got, you know, like the octomom, you've got eight blastocysts or fetuses going on in there, they're not all going to live. You can't, you know, you can't do selective reduction. You can't get a DNC if you've had a baby that's died in you. They can't go into a DNC. Well, so, some of the trigger laws accounted for that. Some, some of the trigger But some of them laws, haven't. You I know. understand that. But, that again, that's a conversation but that they got to have I think at a, a state's women's, level. But I, do, I don't. I think if you're going to have human rights, it has to be a human's right. But there has to be provisions. So it's like if you're a minor. Who's the human? The baby or the mother? Well, that's the thing. So. This is where it gets. Th this is where it gets really sticky for me. Is like it. It's like. I don't know. It, it's re it's really difficult. There's a lot of moving parts to this, and this is why this is why I didn't want to like super, get super deep into all this because <laughs> I don't have a really well formed opinion on all of it. And again, not like I mean I I should, but not like. 
At least you want to. Oh, at right. least you're trying to if have conversations. If the Mars rover found something, you know, on the surface of Mars that had a whole bunch of little cells that were all rapidly dividing, it'd be the biggest news in the world that we found life on Mars. Yeah. It's only here in this modern age that we're told, oh, that's not a life until it hits this point or it hits that point or whatever. So there was a we, conversation. we have to stop picking and choosing. There was right. a conversation that happened on why... Can you go to jail for 30 years for hurting uh, the spotted owl Mm -hmm. or one or two other of these creatures that we've made it against the law to hurt, the bald eagle, things like that. So why can you go to jail for that? And they asked the question, why can you go to jail for that and not go to jail for having an abortion with a child? Well, the spotted owl is endangered. So are our kids. Mm. I, I, I guess I want to. I, I, this may be a topic for another day, sort of situation after we okay. come back together. But it's. I would like to really hear some of your thoughts, like expanding upon, like you were saying before, with the, um, with making it a, a woman's rights kind of situation, and how, like you said, it's a slippery slope, like that kind of stuff. Like just understanding a little bit from from your perspective, how does that fit into this whole? Because the discussion that I've had with people in my own life is like I may have a certain feeling against abortion, but maybe not so much against contraception. Yeah. And like that's that's for me that's where I would like draw the line. Is like mm-hmm. I'm I may not agree with abortion except for specific very mm-hmm. very minor medical cases where it's you know. Required. And that's where I am. That's where I sit. But yeah. then, but then, like again, people talking about also taking away contraception for, for for women. That's when it's like it feels like we're stepping backwards, right? Instead of moving forward, right? And but then again, I also don't want to come across as the guy trying to, you know. I, I, that's why I say it's a tough it's a tough yeah. conversation because it's not just an abortion rights issue. There's a whole bunch of stuff under that umbrella, yeah. and then because each state has their own different sets of laws, um, and each state had its own laws too before you know before yeah. when Roe versus Wade was enacted. But there's just there's a lot more to it that's just not being discussed right now. Right. And well, that's, and Roe that's, versus Wade, the bottom line to Roe versus Wade, and there's even these videos of the Roe lady mm. who started this, who actually never had an abortion, still has three girls, who said, I basically did this so that I could have an abortion on demand. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you, Ian. We don't need to touch contraceptives. We don't need to do what we need to stop is or allow it to happen in a state's thing to where you don't have abortion on demand totally agree with you on the other things 100 percent. but i also disagree that it's not a woman's right abortion should be nobody's right abortion to me is murder 100 percent. because if you found life on mars it would be the greatest thing in the history of the world and it's an amoeba yep so but well, I, and it's it's very ironic that the same people that are screaming my body my rights right now are the same people that were screaming, wanting vaccines for the past two and a half years and telling us that it wasn't mm-hmm. our right to determine That's whether right. we were injected with things. So again, there's always this dichotomy. There's this mm-hmm. this contradiction. It's like you can't be all my body, my rights only when it's convenient. It's got to right. be unilateral. It has to be yep. across the board. That's the definition of the libtards. <laughs> it's only when it's convenient for them. Right. And if I say something about it, I'm a racist or I hate women <laughs> and that's or I why, hate this and, and I hate that's, that. And that's why I was trying to tread lightly on stuff because I want to be educated about this and I want to make sure that if I, let's say, for instance, in our local area, we have the decision to make a vote about certain things. About mm-hmm. So if I, as a male citizen of the state, have the opportunity to make a vote against or for certain things. I would like to hear as many opinions about sure. the women that I live with. Cause again, I don't want to just make that decision lightly. Mm-hmm. And then of course, you know, and you know, and then we're getting into some bigger situations here, but that's, that's the, the gist of it is I don't want to just make decisions or say things or say, I believe in certain things 
enforce my opinion or my judgment on things on people that it's not going to affect me in the slightest. So, or at least not, you know, in like a physical sense. We don't know yet. Oh, I exactly. It might. So there could be 15 little Ian's a few years from now. (laughs) Let's hope not, please. (laughs) (laughs) But anyways, I hope we offended at least one person out there. According to my dad, if abortion would have been legal (laughs) back then, I wouldn't be here. Right, right. And I think, yeah, there's people that I I have heard from in this past week that have said the same thing, that it it is a, you know, once upon a time, they were like, if abortion was readily available, you wouldn't be here right now. And it's like, that's a scary thing to think about because then I I wouldn't be here potentially because of people's decisions or, you know, Mm -hmm. things like that. So anyways... Um, like I said, I hope we offended at least one person out there. I'm pretty sure we did today. <clears throat> we definitely did. At least I did anyway. <laughs> so much for keeping it light and fluffy. <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, it was worth a shot. Um, but anyways, um, if you're looking to get in contact with us and you're looking to try and um, contact us in some way, uh, we have a Facebook page, uh, Facebook forward slash retrospect pod, and you can reach out to us that way. Or you can type in um, Linktree forward slash retrospect pod and you should see all the links in all the different places you can listen to our podcast. But until next time, thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Take care. Peace.